Now, hopefully, I am hoping very much that we can return to the Hofstras. Hello. Hello. Oh, can you hear us? That is a significantly better line. I do apologise for that. It, it, you know, that's, that's off, all right. You'll probably find that so that the connection is so bad that when we had the video on, it just overloaded it. Well, it is one of those things. Now, just for the benefit of anybody just just joining us, let me just quickly summarise what you're going through. Basically, Peter, you and your dear mother are on the run from uh, the British authorities, aren't you? The British and the Austrian authorities now. OK, tell us, tell us. Start where you, where you wanted to initially. Well, basically, um, uh, North Yorkshire Police and the City of York Council, York Social Services and local politicians are after defrauding us of our assets. We fought back. They hounded us out of our house in York. We took refuge in our holiday home in Austria, where we lived peacefully for several years. Then we won a court case against some of the abusers in England and from then onwards the Austrian authorities, particularly the Austrian judiciary, uh, has made aggressive attempts to shut us up, get us out of the way. I've been declared mentally incapacitated and uh, when the Austrian judiciary threatened to come and kick our front door down and section me, we left Austria for a safe third country where we are now officially recognised as persecuted people and under police protection here from the British police and the Austrian judiciary. How, how was your house taken? They haven't, take what they ha they haven't taken it in, in the, that sense. What's happened in Britain is that we, when we went on holiday to Austria, uh, social workers and police officers broke into our house, changed the locks, unlawfully evicted us, stole our valuables, and then threatened to kill us and arrest us if we returned. And we've been fighting them ever since. And uh, when we fought back so well, and Lord McGuinness raised the case in Parliament, uh, a professional fraud investigator assembled so much evidence that we could uh, arrest dozens of police officers, social workers, uh, council officials and politicians. Um, they then decided to shut us up by getting their friends and, and uh, accomplices in the Austrian judiciary to section me. Uh, I mean, people tuning in now may think this sounds like something out of a Hollywood blockbuster, frankly. And uh, and I must admit, when I first got to know you, Peter, I was like, can this possibly be right? Now, why would they have targeted you and your mum? From what we can see, our case is the smallest tip of a very foul iceberg. Explain. We're in, we're in North Yorkshire, Jimmy Savile country. The authorities there have been systematically abusing children for decades. Um, and we also have evidence to suggest that what they're also doing is going around and uh, targeting isolated old people, sticking them in homes, possibly bumping them off and stealing their assets. This is serious organised crime committed by the police and social services against vulnerable people. How widespread have you discovered this to be? Well, just think of the Jimmy Savile case. Mm. You know, 50 years of uh, unrestricted abuse of children. And Jimmy Savile was not alone. There's the club. We know senior police officers were involved in it. Uh, we know senior politicians are involved in all this abuse. Just look at all the stories coming out now around the Savile case. The whole country. So, your mum... Hello, Barbara. Can you hear me? Yes. So, you've now been out of the UK for five years, haven't you? Yes. And, I mean, that, how must it... What must be going through your mind about this? It's quite scandalous, really. What do you think about it all? I think it is disgusting. And I would... Ideally, would like to go home, see all my friends at home. Uh, it's a beautiful place, uh, Yorkshire. And uh, it, 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 it's just upsetting. Of course it is. It oh, is. Yes. It... I, I really want to go home. But we just can't because they probably uh, take Peter away because he's... Uh, what, 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 what do they call you? Mentally incapacitated. It's mentally... <laughs> Well, it is funny, isn't it? I mean, it is funny because because he's one of the sort of least people I'd actually, I have to say, that I'd tag as mentally incapacitated, you know. It's, and it's quite ridiculous, isn't it, the smearing process that takes place. So, 
it's five years since you've been in the UK. What was your first indicate? Because you were away at the time when they broke into your home, weren't you? Uh, Peter, he, oh, well, we were quite shocked. Uh, we, 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 uh, because uh, I <laughs> consider it my home now. I've been there so long. Yes. Uh, and, uh, I've got, got so many things there. Well, of course. Oh, yeah, a lovely bed and all sorts of things uh, that Peter buys me. And uh, it, it's just a heartbreaking. You, you just can't destroy me. Yes. No, it is. It's, it's beyond appalling, really. Peter. Um, I mean, what is your legal position, other than if you enter the country, you'll be arrested? Well, you know, what is... People can't just, you know, take people's homes, can they? Well, obviously they can, because we've fought back hard for years. We've gone th attempted to go through the due process of law. You find a lawyer willing to take on official corruption, let me know if you can't find one. We yes. need one. Right. And... Uh, what can we do to stop them? The, uh, Lord McGuinness has raised the case in Parliament on so many occasions. The police and authorities are not denying accusations of serious corruption and crime committed against an 85-year-old invalid. Um, the Prime Minister doesn't want to do anything. The Home Secretary doesn't want to do anything. This criminality seems endemic in the British government. It's, you know, for, from what I can see, Britain is in the hands of a crime syndicate. But, the, I mean, the thing is, obviously, we can't be naming names, but, uh, I mean, they have to have some kind of inside route, don't they, in order to have been able to have done this? And they've had assistance, haven't they, in your case? Oh, yes. Um, we have indications that uh, a certain organisation called Common Purpose is involved in this. Um, a number of the people involved in abusing Mum and I are what they call graduates of Common Purpose. The Chief Executive of the City of York Council... Uh, whose, whose name maybe I shouldn't mention, but it's Kirsten England, is a, a graduate of Common Purpose, along with all her senior management. Mm. What is the justification they've actually used for taking your house away, though? They haven't used any justification. They've mm. just done it. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, as I say, it just, it, it beggars belief. No wonder, you know, you're almost perpetually confused by it, because, as indeed am I, because it's, it's quite extraordinary, isn't it? Because if it can happen to you... It can happen to anybody. So I assure you it is happening to lots of people, but they don't have the ability to fight back like we do. If you go for isolated old people who are, you know, a widow, widower, the last surviving spouse, and you just uh, go in their house, you get them to sign a piece of paper, they don't know what it is, um, and then you put them in an old people's home to, do a, you know, to help them out. They don't know their house has been stolen. They don't know the assets have been plundered. Um, I... In York, these assets are being being, being laundered through uh, dodgy private health, uh, uh, private care companies. I've looked the names, the details, the directors. Um, I know what's going on. That's why they want to shut me up, lock me up and put me in a mental home. And you believe without question that the Austrian authorities are complicit, don't you? Uh, beyond reasonable doubt, um, the, the coordination of their actions is mind-blowing. It's just unbelievable. At first, we couldn't believe it at first that it was possible, but we now have now established that similar abuse of, of mental health laws uh, and the, the illegal plundering of, of vulnerable people's assets is going on in Austria as well as in Britain. Tell the same people involved. Tell me some of the sort of series of events that you've experienced over this last five years. Um... Mum, would you like to talk about the, the morning Dad died and what happened then? Oh, my, my, my first son was born deaf. And uh, I taught him to speak and uh, uh, read and write and read books and things before he went to school. Right. And they, they said that, they said that, he must have had a brave teacher until they discovered that I had to help him. And he's always been very kind to me. Right. He, he, he travels a lot to different countries. He, 
pits, especially in there, and they always brings me back lovely presents. Mm. But, but I, we haven't seen him now for the... Your mum, tell, tell Sonia what happened the morning Dad died. Well, oh, when my husband died, we uh, the, the doctor said he only had two great days to go. Right. And Peter quickly phoned, uh, emailed Pete all of us to come and see him before he died. Right. But unfortunately, he got there with, uh, when they, he had died. Right. He, he died at what? Nine, uh, four in the morning. Four in the morning. And anyway, I I touched him because I had to do, to do he was being deaf. And he turned around to me and he said, you're a wicked witch. I couldn't believe it. It was... Well, what happened, Sonia, in the morning Dad died was, and we told Robert, my older brother, who's a social worker in York Social Services, uh, that Dad was uh, on his way out. He should come and make his peace with him. He never turned up. Uh, they waited until after Dad had died, my brother and his family, and I know they knew he had died before they came. They turned up with a police escort, who? charged in our house, assaulted mum, assaulted me, screamed at dad's dead body, the corpse was still warm, and then threatened to kill us as they walked out. And the police threatened to arrest me every time I tried to protect mum from this abuse and physical violence. I mean, it is quite extraordinary. Obviously, as I say, anybody that we've mentioned in the telling of this story, we absolutely give you the right to reply. Um, I, you know, I, I, how can people help you? Where can they find your story and support you, Peter and Barbara? Well, the first thing, they can Google the abuse of Grandma B. Um, the second thing is, I'll, I'll just find the uh, 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 web address for you. Mum has her blog, and okay. her blog okay. is grandmabarbara.wordpress.com. The documentation's there, uh, the store is there, only the smallest part of it. And then just Google Lord McGuinness and Barbara Hofstra and you will see everything Lord McGuinness has said about the case in Parliament, which nobody in government is disputing. Nobody is disputing that York Council and North Yorkshire Police are running a crime syndicate in which they've targeted my mother. And my mother's case, we are certain, is only the smallest tip of a very foul iceberg and that we have abuse here going on on an industrial scale absolutely appalling i thank you very much i'm very glad we managed to to get you back on skype because i think what you've had to say is absolutely vital for people to hear i think it's extraordinary that you've been plunged into that situation barbara i am so very sorry that you are having to live you know your fifth year in in effectively in exile i'm really sorry about that i'm appalled at what what has been done to you peter hofstra barbara hofstra take care of yourselves i wish you a very good weekend Take care. Thanks, Thank you for joining thanks us. Thanks for Sonia. Thanks for listening to us. Pleasure. Absolute pleasure. Now, join us after the break where we will discuss the alleged dangers of smart meters. Don't go away. <laughs>